This video explains what the instance property on some of Uscript's nodes is for. An instance is just a game object in your Unity scene that you need to use with some node types in Uscript. The type of nodes that require instances are all event nodes, those are the orange ones, and all reflected action and property nodes. So let me show you several different ways you can use instances in Uscript. So here I have a very simple Unity scene set up. I have a green button that I made out of a cube, and then have another orange cube up here. So all I want to happen is when I click on this cube down here, I want this thing to fall and hit the floor. When it hits the floor, I want to just rotate this green cube by 90 degrees. So let's hit play real quick and see what happens. Now if I click on this green cube, nothing happens. And again, what should happen is this orange box should fall to the floor, and when it hits the floor, the floor should be telling this green button to spin 90 degrees. So let's take a look at our graph. So as you can see, we have the logic all set up. So I have my mouse cursor event here, which should be listening for the button clicks. And when it receives a click, it should be setting use gravity to true, which will make the orange cube fall out of the sky. And down here we have our on collision, which going through a time gate, so it only happens once in our case, should spin the button 90 degrees. So what's missing? Well, we need to set a bunch of instance properties on these nodes to tell Uscript exactly what game objects we want to affect or have be affected. Okay, well, now let's get started and fix the graph. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just fix the events. They're fairly simple. So the mouse cursor one, what we want is we want to tell this event what object we care about when it's clicked on. In this case, it'd be that green button. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the button from the hierarchy and just going to drag it into the graph and place it as a game object and then hook it up. So what we're doing now, like I said, is we're now telling this event to listen for mouse clicks on the button. Without this being here, Uscript wouldn't know what to listen for. Now let's do the same for the on collision. In this case, like we said, we wanted the floor to be able to tell the button to spin. So we'll come over here again Grab the floor, drag it in, and hook it up to the instance field. Now, of course, if you don't want to have the variable exposed like that, you can, of course, just go to the properties and set the instance down here. Okay, we now have two more instances we have to fix. So let's go back up here, and <clears throat> we have two reflected nodes. So in case you're not sure quite what these are, I've used them yet, they're pretty much anything that's in your scene section of your nodes palette is just reflected by unity. So in this case, these colored square nodes are pretty much just variables, um, but they're properties on objects in unity. So if we expand properties, and we go down to the rigid body, you'll see here's the use gravity one. And if I wanted, I could place another one in the scene. I delete that. So just placing one of these properties in your graph isn't enough. We actually also have to assign an instance here so we can tell Uscript what game object we want to change the use gravity on. So I click on here. Of course, there's no socket to hook one up externally because these act more like a variable. But we can come down to properties and we can type it in here. We also have a browser button as you can see here, but currently this isn't working correctly because of a bug in Unity. So I'll close that and we'll just type it in. And we want to change the gravity, to t well, we want to turn on the gravity on the cube. Type in cube. You'll see as soon as I finished typing the name, it auto-completed and told us we do have a valid object from our scene that we're using. So, and you can also see up here, the title's changed the cube. All right, that's ready to go. Now, the last thing we need to put an instance on is our Unity Engine Transform. So this is an action node, but again, it's also a reflected one. So if we come back up to here, let's close properties, go up to action, and go to transform, and rotate. You'll see there's a bunch of reflected rotate action nodes. So we had already picked one of these. I'm going to close this for now and put it in our scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate by 90 degrees on the Y axis. So again, we need to tell this node what game object we plan to actually rotate. So in this case, it, this works a lot like the target uh, in a lot of our nodes that we make that we call target. And uh, same thing, so we just have to go grab the button. Or I could just link it to this one up here, since it's the same game object. 
and I should be able to hit save and we're ready to go. Close uScript. Hit play again. And this time when I click, the cube falls and the floor tells the button to rotate. Okay, so let's go back into uScript and talk about a couple last things regarding instances. So in this case, we assign instances to these two events. Sometimes uScript will assign an instance to an event by itself. It usually does this if it's an event type that doesn't necessarily care about what object it's on in the world. It just has to live somewhere in order to work. So in these cases, usually uScript will just assign the master game object, which is underscore uScript, to that event. So as an example, if we go down into uh, game events and we place a uScript events, you'll see by default in the properties it automatically assigned uScript as the instance. Usually when it does that, it's just fine to leave it that way. On the other hand, if we place a trigger event, you'll see that it did not assign an instance because in this case, the trigger will be the actual game object um, with a collider component on it that you want to use as a trigger in the world. And you could have hundreds of them, so you need to specify exactly what trigger you care about for this given event right here. And close your script. Nope. And just run this one more time just so you can see it again. So click here. Cube falls, cause it to rotate. So there you go. As you can see, instances are a very important part of uScript in order for you to be able to tell uScript what specific game objects in your scene you're trying to work with. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.